We that could go back 40 years to late 70s, early 80s and the whole of Windmill Lane, when I think, was that part of it? That wall was part of it. Part I, of I haven't quite got my bearings as to north, south and where that wall was. I, I can visualise walking in, the car park and everything, but that wall does remind me. OK, but I just don't want, to, want to go back 14 years to um, How to Dismantle an Atomic Bomb, which was yes. an album by U2. Now, U2 were faffing around at the time. They spent too long making an album that happens all the time when you get very famous. But 18 months, two years, we better get Lily White in. They get Lily White in. What was your job to do there? Because they have a bunch of songs that are good, bad, or indifferent. Were right. you looking for, Bono, we need a hit? Well, my, I've had various jobs with U2. Over the years, I produced their first three albums. And then on the Joshua Tree, I was brought in as a sort of closer because they'd been going on a long time. So I joined the team on the Joshua Tree. By the way, can I just say, there was a gig last week in New York City, a very important gig for, yeah. you, for, you, for you two. Are you going to uh, interrupt me all this no, time? No, hold on. At the Apollo. And <laughs> they did it for a major radio station in America. They didn't like the mix. He's been mixing it for the last four days, so the connection yeah. has gone 40 years. Yeah, yeah, I, 40 years, I'm, I'm, I'm still with them. But on how to dismantle an atomic bomb, I was brought in because they had a producer, but, but it didn't work out. But they're such nice people, they let it roll on and roll on, and it just sort of ground to a halt. And I came in, I said, play me, play me all the songs, you know, play the songs, and they had this one song called um, Native Son, and I went, that sounds like it's going to be the hit. You know, they said, yeah, we agree, that's the single. And it was a sort of, to be honest, quite a dour song about gun control. But it had this um, great riff of edges. But the production, I didn't like how it sounded. And this was one of the few times where I could say to Bono, go in and sing a live vocal. Because all of that time, after the first album, he'd never written the lyrics for a song until after the music was done. He always wanted music to inspire him to write the lyrics. So he'd written the lyrics for Native Son. Uh, I said, go in and sing it, you know, because the, 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 rec the song was sounding really good. So he went in there, picked up the mic, started singing. Halfway through the song, I hear the mic go down. He walks in. What are you doing? He goes, I can't sing that. Well, what do you mean? He says, I've got to go around the world for two years. I can't sing that song. I said, well, I'm going to write it. I'm going to write a new song. So we, we cut the music, and, um, and then we must have spent weeks going over different choruses, different choruses, trying different things. Um, and eventually, one night, he came up with, you know, not the most original, hello, hello, I'm at a place called Vertigo. Okay, Bono, great, great. It's late, we better go home. Came in, <laughs> came in next morning, we're listening to it. Yes you know, maybe we try another one. And like the, the, the cook or the cleaning lady sort of walks past and goes, oh, I like that one. And we go, really? You know, because we're, we're, our heads are up our asses.